today, what we're going to do is we're going to try to go through uh, from Revelation 7 on, at the same time, more in a discussion format. Uh, the notes have already been given, so hopefully you've read them. So we can just mainly discuss the points. We'll be reading the scriptures, going through and just trying to summarize instead of all comparative study that's um, a little bit done in those notes, to actually just try to get a consensus and a sense of what the scriptures are teaching. Uh, of course, I think most of us hold to a, a futuristic view of these scriptures, and uh, mean that they are literal, and even if, some, if they're symbolic, it's expressed as such. But also today, hopefully at the board, we can maybe try to fit in some of the events we're going to see, uh, to go back a bit and look at uh, Revelation 6, to kind of place it in, to maybe uh, speculate how it works. And though we know at the end uh, whether we get the exact time sequence right or not, it won't matter. We know the events are true. They will happen according to the Word of God, and that alone is is worth, valuable enough to study it. So going on, we'll, we'll continue on with chapter 7, read through, and then we'll highlight the points, and then we'll go back with chapter 6 afterwards. So I'm just reading through one verse at a time, chapter 7, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having a seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Saying, Her not the earth, neither the sea, nor the tree, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. <clears throat> and I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand, of all the tribes of the children of Israel. The tribe of Judah, 12,000. The tribe of Reuben, sealed 12,000. The tribe of Gad, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed twelve thousand, and the tribe of Joseph were sealed twelve thousand, and of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed twelve thousand. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And cried with a loud voice, saying, a Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne, and about the elders, and the four living creatures, and fell down before the throne on their faces and worshipped God. Saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, these are they who came out of the great tribulation, and who have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. The Lamb who is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them into living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Okay, just going to add some of the outlines here, dealing with this section. We have for chapter 7, one just, for all chapter 7, one is the sealed, and another one is talking about tribulation events. And... Another one has context of tribulation to the day of wrath. So we have chapter 7, we have two main divisions, the sealing of the servants and the seeing of the saints. Or as others put it, Israel sealed remnant and tribulation saints. Or another one, remnant and the rest. Or also before tribulation, after tribulation. And so dealing, going through and looking at the set, Sealing of the saints, we have the setting and the sealing, or the introduction in Israel, or delay 
for the sealing of servants and description of the sealed servants. And we have in our course notes, course notes one to three, the circumstances and sign for sealing, and 48, complement and scope of sealing. This is generally looking at it, but as we go through, we'll mainly just stick to the, to, uh, you can go through and follow your notes, but I'm only going to stick to probably just going through this. Oh, maybe it won't. Okay, just going through then, and after these things, just even that uh, term itself, we're not going to read through the notes, but even that term itself shows that there's some progression. This is, again, something that uh, um, really makes it hard to see. Is John talking about the progression of the revelation that he got, which we know even when Old Testament prophets received revelation, it was a progression to them. But we saw there was like two full parts when it was Messianic prophecy. Sometimes mashed together is like with Isaiah when he said um, that the Spirit of the Lord was upon him to, to uh, preach his word and do the works. And then the Lord Jesus, when he sat down and closed the book, he left off the last part of the verse because that talks about the day of the Lord. And so the first part, he was showing the first part of that verse was talking about the first advent is coming and what he's to do. And he stopped because the second part of the verse is talking about the second advent. And, uh, and yet to Isaiah, it's one progressive whole. So it's just something, we see a progression, like a time progression, where he says, after these things, and it'll go through as we keep reading through, that he gives time references after this, or another, and then, or, and then, or whatever. He gives a time reference. So it's interesting whether this is relation to Revelation. Maybe it is showing that it's totally chronological, as he sees it, is exactly as it is, except for these parentheses because if you look at it contextually some of them deal with the first part some deal with the second coming but it seems like when it deals with the trumpets and that is that all one complete line but anyways so he says after these things and of course that's after the seals he sees these things uh exactly he says after these things i saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth and if you read in your notes uh holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on any tree so even with this, one thing we're going to realize about the book of the Revelation is such an unveiling, not only the Lord Jesus Christ, not only is it a revealing of how things to go together in the end times, how the prophecies fit in Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, how Matthew 24 and that fits in, but it's something I, as I've gone through it, I've realized more and more, it just, it's almost astounding to us because you really don't think about it that much, um, is just the ministry of angels. Uh, we know about them a bit, uh, Hebrews, that they're ministering spirits, and we know that uh, they um, are sometimes even given to hospitality. They, they will go and be um, receive hospitality because some will entertain angels unawares, and that they look into things concerning salvation. It's a real wonder to them that here is uh, mankind able to redeem who is rebellious and has a chance of salvation. Remember, angels don't have salvation. Those that have sinned don't have a chance to repent. Um, if there's The only way that could happen is the Lord Jesus became an angel and died as an angel or something, if that was possible. But um, So they marvel. Here we are created beings in the image of God, rebel against God, and then uh, we're yet to be redeemed and exalted above the angels. So they marvel. But yet, in the book of the Revelation, we have here... Uh, such an unfolding of different types of ministries of angels. It almost seems, and what a lot do is you read through your notes and other ones I, I didn't even include, but uh, men try to spiritualize it almost. It just seems overwhelming that here's all these angels or what they do. Um, it seems too great in a sense to take it all in. Like this here, here's four, here are specific angels uh, that are standing at specific spots. Spots now four corners of the world. Is, some will say, "Oh, well, look, there it looks like the, the the Earth is square or something." You know, four corners. But of course, it, if you go through notes, it could mean like the four points of a compass. You know, north, south, east, west. But the interesting point is, there are these four angels. They do have power over the the air currents, whatever that is, and they actually stop them. Now, what many conclude, and we're we're going to start doing this over here. Um,
So we have chapter uh, one I have up here. Chapter one here, chapters uh, right underneath two and three. This deals with the church age, right? We have the rapture. That's like four one. And then uh, right here we'll have the beginning of the trib. Right here we'll have the mid. And we're going to see as we go through, we we'll record this after, as we go through, we're going to see a lot of events. If what the interpretations are true, there's a lot of things that go on right around this time. This is a very uh, traumatic time. A lot of things happen at that point. And this is the uh, second advent. Now, right here, we'll go back later, but we had um, chapters 4 and 5 seem to be in parenthesis, but even um, we have chapter 4 here it seems to happen, but it seems to be almost continuous too, that it goes on to a certain point. It seems to, to kind of go on for the whole span. Chapter 5 seems to be broken up into almost three parts, because the last, or, or yeah, I think it was three parts, because the last part of it, if you can remember, almost sounds like a millennial praise. It sounds like at the very end, uh, way beyond here, like part of chapter 5 is over here. So it seems to, to, to span a certain part of it. If you want to look at that, it's, uh, it says, And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under sea, and such are in the sea and are in them, heard, saying, Blessing and honor, and unto land forever. And so that it's every tongue, so it seems like 13 and 14 is like millennial praise um, because not everything is doing that right now as such. I mean, not every tongue is praising him. But we know in the millennium and stuff, to our state, that's going to be true. So anyways, in chapter 6, we saw then the uh, opening of the seals. And it could be, I was thinking about it when I was driving the other day, that the seals could be opening pretty well just as quick as you read about them. That they're open. It, it's a beginning of something. It's it's the allowing in heaven. Remember what uh, and the, the idea of the perspective of this book. What happens on heaven is then happens on earth. It's not the reverse as we sometimes, from our perspective, see it. It's because it's allowed in heaven, permitted in heaven, that things start. It's not until that time, and um, that's why the church has been given a unique thing. What two pray together and are bound here on earth will be done in heaven. And uh, it's very interesting. In fact, all the prayers of the saints for the kingdom to come is going to happen. But it's wait right now. That's the answer. But anyways, we, we have, so in other words, what I'm saying is the first couple of seals could pretty well be within a matter of fulfillment on earth, within a matter of days, that they actually start to take place and it progresses. Now, if we go, um, the first seal, um, the first seal in chapter 6 was the, uh, the Antichrist, or maybe personification of the system, is allowed. He goes out to conquer, and conquering, and to conquer. And of course, a lot have a problem with that thing. Well, he wore like a red crown, but it's a, it's a victory crown that he wears. And I don't see any problem with it, because in a couple places, he's going to fight battles. And so I don't see any problem with him going to, to conquering and to conquer. Uh, I don't think Christ is the only one that would do that. He does that. In fact, that's how he sets up his false peace, as we're going to see if the interpretation follows through. The second seal was war. Now this was using, uh, we saw terms like the sacrificial dagger and stuff. And some say, well, it's against the saints. Well, I think there's another one for that anyways. And of course it could happen because of how it progresses, um, going to conquer and conquer and how war is prevalent in nation against nation. Remember, the Holy Spirit is taken away. Godly influence is taken away, except for the 144,000 and those who will get saved. But they won't have that much into society anymore. Because after this, and it seems about here about the mark of the beast, but they're mainly going to be persecuted. And because of these famines and some of these judgments, and later when we read about the uh, two witnesses, uh, they're mainly going to be persecuted for the troubles that are upon them. So uh, I think it's mainly war among mankind. Remember, his lusts and his desires are going wild. It's going to be as it was in the days of Noah. And uh, where every thought was only evil continually. In man's mind. The uh, third seal was uh, famine and also like pestilence and what seems to follow in order to when you have these kind of things war or not. The fourth seal was the um, was death in Hades 
and almost like uh, just reading, death takes the body and Hades takes the soul. And again, personifications in a sense, but yet it's interesting, it's something I always do a study on. Here they're personified, and yet they're cast into the lake of, of um, fire. Now whether it's them or what they contain, in other words, everything that was sinful is, is thrown into the lake of fire. But all these seem to go. There's always been death. There's always been famine. There's always been war. I mean, but this is going to be an extent where finally it's as judgment upon sinful man. That's the difference. And there's going to be wars throughout, but it's, of course, not like the Great War. And there's going to be famine throughout, but as you see, as judgments increase, um, God also has a purpose for this. As we go through, it's almost like, and you can see it, it goes with the character and nature of God. It's like each one, he's waiting, wanting people to repent. And I believe out of this tribulation period, there's going to be more saved or redeemed than there has been through all of time. Because ever upon the earth, there's going to be a lot who are redeemed. There's going to be a lot who are killed too because of the consequences of it. But each time, it's like God with the messengers and everything, he wants people to repent. And yet we, as you read forward, if you, I'm sure you read through the book of Revelation before, they end up blaspheming. They'll end up even acknowledging God. When some catastrophe happens, they acknowledge God and it's from the Lamb. And it seems like in a short while they've forgotten or they rationalized it or naturalized whatever's happened and they're back to what they were. Yet maybe some through that period have gotten saved. Uh, maybe with literature that's been left behind from Christians. Maybe from the witnessing of 144. Maybe from hearing of the two witnesses uh, who pronounced judgment. Maybe the angelic angels. Uh, messengers going in the heavenlies. So anyways, now whether these happen uh, just like this and very short within days or whatever, and it's allowed to progress through this, or that they take a block of time, it's not really specified, just that it's done, it's open and it's done. But if it is progressive in some way, we don't know the extent of time here. Uh, the fifth seal, it was uh, the martyrdom. Anyways, but the martyrdom, and that's when you have from the altar, it sounds like already it's got to be a little progression of time because there's these souls under the altar who have these white robes because showing the blood and their, their blood of righteousness, um, of innocence is calling out because they've been murdered and stuff, and they're told, wait, there's still others that are going to come. And, uh, that seems to happen. Again, these can all go in effect, just like it has in the past. Things like this have happened. Uh, people have been moving Christians, Inquisition, things like this, when something else has happened. Now, the sixth seal was. As the, the mountains depart and the moon turns dark and the sun turns The earthquake. Dark. The earthquake. Now it's it's. Um, let me just read that because it's kind of got my mind of the extent of it. And uh, let's see, verse twelve. When he and I beheld when he had opened this, the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree cast of their untimely figs, when she was shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll, when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and great men, and rich men, and the chief of the captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. And said unto the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, who shall be able to stand? Now there's, there's terms in there that can be confusing. Why we'll see... How it can be seen that maybe this relates to some of the other earthquake um, judgments that happen. Because it says, for the great day of his wrath. And so uh, he'll be able to stand. So whether this happens right here or this happens later on, we'll have to, we'll have to discover. But it seems to be a one-time event, too. It doesn't seem to go on for years or anything. It seems to be one event. Of course, you saw, uh, like Morris and I explained, well, some of it could happen, not just naturalistic, but... There's this divine shaking, and maybe because of the moving and stuff, 
there's the spewing and all this kind of stuff, making it black, and because of the if you have iron stuff in the, in the air, it makes red and all this kind of stuff. So it's naturalistic and what God uses, but it's He when you look at the other ones, it doesn't sound as total destruction this earthquake as say the one in the uh, the bowls. Like that one, things are just totally moved and, and it sounds like totally dev devastation of the whole world. This sounds like it's affecting the earth, but it sounds like a, like a great earthquake. And um, the first one, and in fact, it could be again, this is the first signal again. And uh, things go on. But where we place that, we'll see in a second. Then um, we come there and we have about the ceiling. Instead of the seventh seal, and we all of a sudden go off to uh, look at some sealed servants. So it's almost like a parenthesis in a sense of, I don't like the word parenthesis, but what it's looking at is maybe something that instead of is going in order or something, is going to look at a span. And it's looking at a certain group. In fact, they do it at a certain time. They look at the beast in his kingdom. They look at the 144,000. Look at the sealed servants. They're, it's like you're looking at groups. You say, okay, this is going on. What about this? Okay, this is going on. What about this? Could be. So then we see that uh, here are these uh, in chapter 7, where I was going to start about these sealed servants. And um, the first thing is the angels holding the winds, and uh, they're not to hurt the earth and the sea, who it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, who have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them, they were sealed, and they were 144,000 of the tribes. Now again, we're not going to go through all the comparative stuff. I, I believe that this are literal 144,000. If you're going to see, I think they're men. I think of these 144,000, they're Jews, uh, just by their tribes. And of course, no Jew today knows his lineage. They can guess by their name. All the records of Jewish lineage was destroyed in 70 AD with the temple. That's why there can be no Messiah. Only Jesus, because his lineage is proved, his lineage is recorded, and it was, and it could be affirmed. That's why there can be no Messiah now, because not one Jew can show where he comes from. And uh, maybe uh, Satan will have something forged, or whatever, to show his false Messiah as being one. I don't know, but no Jew can. But God knows, and He's kept accurate records. And He, I believe, is actually going to have twelve thousand of each tribe. And the way they get saved. Uh, could be just by literature and, and God and, and just impresses them with the word and they see it. Maybe some of these events will draw them back to the scriptures and they'll, they'll finally understand it. Uh, remember, the Antichrist is revealed at this time, not so much as being the Antichrist, but his nature. But also this time is supposed to be a time of false peace in the sense where through establishing to conquer and to con conquering and to conquer, he's able to establish a peace covenant for seven years with the... Um, with the nation Israel to restore worship. But anyways, 144,000. Maybe they're saved like Paul. Paul said he was one born out of due time. Uh, that could be a reference to that the way he was saved is like the way the other 144,000 get saved. They're going to get a revelation of Christ. They're going to be saved. Remember, there's no Christians at this time. So whether it's through events drawing them to the scriptures and they get saved, of course, by the word of God, or it's something the way Paul was converted. 144,000 are going to get saved and going to be sealed too. Yeah, some of these events that are happening. See, these will look similar. These these will be like they've never had before. But I'm sure that's why you still have the Orthodox uh, Jews. When when it was things like uh, Germany and was things like that persecution, it drove them back to their Torah. Yeah, some were still blinded. Some got saved too. Um, there's like Zvi. If you ever read the book, he got saved. And he was a Jew and stuff. But anyways, uh, how do these guys get saved? There seems to be 144,000. I want to see the extent of ministry. Actually, we'll, we'll notice in, in future passages when it talks about them, their ministry, they're preserved right to the end. Not a one dies. In fact, this is 
later on, I forget which chapter it is. And I'm, I'm getting them all from reading. I'm just getting them. I don't know, can't place it. But John is amazed. At the very end, they're actually on the Mount Zion praising the Lord. Waiting there. All the 144,000. He's amazed. Because not one of them is dead. But here they are. Uh, right there waiting for the Lord. And they're there when he comes. And um, they go forward from there. So there's 144,000 sealed. And they could be sealed. Whether I don't think it's a visible seal as such. I think it's a spiritual seal. But uh, whatever. They are sealed. And something like in the way that uh, believers are sealed. By the Holy Spirit. And they're kept. It's, uh, it's amazing when you think about it. The safest place to be is in the will of God. And until the will of God is they, they go here, they're indestructible. Totally indestructible. And uh, no matter what Satan would try to do, it doesn't mean they're going to have not hard times. Or some trials, but they will not die. And uh, they're looked after. So they're from each tribe. And again, just showing that, why would John be given this thing to repeat it? He could have just stopped with saying 144,000 of all the tribes the children of Israel, but he also names the tribes. And if you read through the notes, there's some speculation why Levi is mentioned, other times you're not. In fact, there's many times you go through, I think it was about 40 times, I think, I remember reading that the, the tribes are mentioned, and not always the same order. There's always different orders of the tribes, or different who's included and who's not. It seems kind of to relate to what they were talking about. Like, um, I think Ephraim's not mentioned in this, and of course, what's that? And Dan? Because maybe it's due to sin of idolatry or whatever. Whatever the reason is, and uh, you, you can read the notes for yourself. Again, speculation. We just know this is what's going to happen. So then, um, he says, then the other thing. So we see the seal, the sealed ones. I think it starts anywhere around here. They're sealed, and they start, and they progress through, as we'll see in other scriptures. Then, he talks about a great multitude, which no man could number, and the tongues, and stood before the throne, before the Lamb. Clothed uh, with white, and the palms of their hand, and cried loud voice, saying, Salvation of God was set upon the throne unto the Lamb. Now the angels stood around the throne. So we get a heavenly scene. We're transported to, uh, to a heavenly scene. And um, we, get, we have a praise session with a great multitude. And I think this multitude that talks about, um, so we have chapter 4, we have uh, chapter 5. And all the way to chapter 5, uh, roughly 13 and 14. I think uh, this one is another one that spans. This is chapter uh, 7. So something like the heavens. And not just scenes in heaven, but not things specifically praises in heaven. Right? But it might even be later on. Chapter 7 through uh, 9 through 13. Yeah, actually, the whole rest of the chapter. Because he says, who are these? And I think it's a rhetorical question. First, it's an elder that comes to him, another believer, who, which I believe is a believer, one of the elders, comes to him. And uh, he goes, who is it? I think it's a rhetorical question. I think he knew, but he's trying to teach something and also trying to lay something to the saints. And um, they said, we came out of the great tribulation and washed the robes. Now, whether the great tribulation is talking about the great tribulation, which I think is the last half, or great tribulation, without the article, I don't think that is... She says, came out of great tribulation. I don't know if the article is there or not. To say, the great. Mm -hmm. Wash your robes in the Lamb. Um, Mr. Date says it's in the Greek, the great tribulation. The great tribulation. So it's out of the second half then. And um, and you can see that the final results, the living water, white bread, because it's all relating to probably uh, what they experienced too. You know, being able to drink the living waters. Remember the... the uh, if we look at the trumpets, they happen here. Um, the drought, the dryness, all that kind of stuff. We see the, the wiping away the tears, again, being just the sorrow they've experienced. But they've come through. And, and remember, these other ones, I think, are not the 144,000. These ones are going to be tribulation saints that it's talking about. So we'll move this one over. <laughs> Chapter 7, uh, 9 through 17. It's interesting. Many, uh, some, I've, I've heard this too. Some expositors will use that portion and both God wipe away the tears and they'll say that it's uh, referring to uh, the church Christians who after the judgment seat of Christ <laughs> because of their shame, God wipes away their tears and it's like, okay, it's okay now. 
And uh, but you see in the context, it's not talking about that. It's not referring to 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 I believe to church saints. It's referring to those who came out of the great tribulation. So it's talking about these these saints. And it's interesting that's in the same chapter, the 144,000. It's almost like it's like a, re a result of these guys' ministries. These guys come out. You know, it's interesting that it's together. Whether or not that's the reason, it could be just of showing the saints and, and ones who he's redeemed. So great multitude. And it's notice it's of all nations, kindreds, peoples, and tongues. So I think many, many, I, I, I just, I have a feeling that more than probably have been saved are going to be saved during that one time. It's going to be a great redeeming by the Lord. So really, when you, you kind of look at it that way, even though there's great judgment, there is a great harvest, I think, during this time. There's also something I think the church won't be able to do is truly when it fulfills that everywhere the gospel is preached. Because you have, again, the two witnesses, you have the 144,000, you have the angelic ministers and the, the heavenlies. It's like they finally get a chance to say the gospel, and they're going to say it. And uh, I think everyone's going to hear that. And you're still going to have those who harden their hearts. And you have a lot who are saved. Um, those who will harden their hearts again in the middle of the tribulation? Yeah, middle and on. And I think at each, at each judgment, some will get saved. I think that's why the Lord does it in a certain way. Each point will be some who say, finally some who bend the knee and, and, and submit, but some will keep hardening because of each judgment. You know, just like Pharaoh. And I think there's, it'd be a neat study, but I think there's so much similarity. There is in, in a little bit, but just really what happened with Egypt and the plagues upon it, that is going to be like happened here. And each consequence and the way that things progress there. But if you really studied it and really looked at it finally, you'd find a lot more truths from that, how God deals with it and, and his purposes and how to draw out his people. So then... Any comments so far or things you want to discuss so far concerning what we've kind of read? Okay, we'll just take you up. We said chapter 1 was here. Remember that was the things which have been. He saw the revelation. This, But it's all during the church age. Chapter 2 and 3. We say 4 1. They're symbolizing the rapture, right? Chapter 4 was heavenly praise. It goes on. This like concerning heaven. Chapter 5 was... The heavenly praise too, and also it seems even millennial praise, and thirteen where it says every tongue, everything confess. I don't, I don't think it's happening now. I think it's going to happen in millennium. So it's all dealing with heavenly praise and that. Chapter six, we said there are the six seals, and whether they happen one right after another, like it seems in succession, or whether there's a, a greater time gap, it doesn't really give a time reference when they exactly take place or how long, but it does seem to be in the first part. It does to be seen a little bit of succession. We took this to be like the Antichrist or anti-Christian philosophy or, or the system coming in because it seems to be personification. If you make the white horse and rider a person, a literal person, right, then your second horse, who is that literal person also if you're going to be consistent in interpreting? So it seems though there is a person associated with that, and I'm sure there will be generals for this and there will be things like this, they will go through. This is mainly showing the type of things that are happening upon the earth. And this, basically within the first three and a half, right? What's that? Or that's basically within the first three and a half, or within the whole seven. Well, I think they'll continue throughout, in a sense. The seals are broken. But yeah, the, the, the seals, when they first are enacted, happen in the first three and a half. Okay? Now, um, I was mentioning before, when, when I was taught, we were kind of taught that the first seal actually took up the three and a half years. Oh, really? And it was just kind of false peace. Then... The break of war was at the mid-trib, and all these happened right here. I believe these, even if they're broken here, will still happen over here. There, there, there are really no time limit on these wars, famines, death, and all that. Okay? But that these also, just to, through looking at history, have always happened. When there was war, or system of setting itself up, and there's war, there's famine because of war, harder times. Uh, there's also pestilence and stuff. Uh, you have death in Hades. Uh, because of war, because of famine, because of pestilence. And martyrdom, uh, it's always been like uh, uh, some things that Philip gives. He actually gives historical things when, um, like the Black Plague. Do you know, I never knew that, but did you know that about, I think, over 60,000 Jews were killed 
because of that. They, when the Black Plague was happening, they didn't know it was mic microorganisms that were in uh, uh, flea infested rats. So they would sit in smoke filled rooms. They thought it was clean air at first. That did it. And they would sit in smoke rooms and it was all black. That's called the Black Plague. What period was that? Middle Ages. I, I forget the exact date. But what happens was they then said, well, certain people. The old thing like uh, Jonah and the great fish, you know, who upon the ships angered God? You got to get rid of them. Well, they looked around, Jews. I see these Jews or something. They persecuted Jews. So, anyways, things like this are associated with martyrdom. And we're also thinking that uh, this is the seal that allows them to martyr uh, tribulation saints, except 144,000 are sealed. I also think maybe it probably starts in this time too, because this is all happening. And later when we look at it, the two witnesses, I think, from looking at it, their main ministry actually happened in the first three and a half years. And they're killed because there seems to be a victory. And then finally, it seems to be an establishment of the beast's total reign and kingdom and who he is. And so if the two witnesses and these guys are, are during this period too, we're witnessing. And they're talking about judgments of God. And you'll see the witnesses, it looks like they're casting down fire. They're calling a drought for three and a half years. They're doing all this, which seem to correspond to the seven trumpets, uh, it looks like when they do things, they're the ones calling it, just like the plagues in Egypt. Moses is the one calling it, but of course it's God doing it. We never just get to see the heavenly scene, what goes on. Maybe their trumpets were being blown by angels then. You know, who knows? And um, all this is going on, the ungodly element will start martyring these people. They're the ones causing it. Get rid of them. I mean, when Elijah called drought, they didn't say repent. They said, get him. You know, kill him and then there's no more drought. And so maybe the same type of thing. So that, that could be why the seal. Now martyrdom is going to go on all the way through. So this could actually take place in the first day or so, time-wise. He sees the kind of effects it's going to have, but it, didn't, it just goes on. But maybe they're broken in the first day. It doesn't give a real time period as such. But it seems to be also a little bit of a succession. This is the only one that doesn't seem to progress anywhere throughout. It seems to be a one-time event, an earthquake. And it's black and covered. Uh, some stars find, fall, which I think are meteorites. It seems to be this thing. And, and of course, if you look at uh, Morris and that, it could have a, a natural use by divine judgment of things, but it doesn't seem to relate as we'll read later when we get there. It doesn't seem to relate as such to like the seventh bowl and that when you have the great shake and bake as such, because it seems to be just totally uh, devastating what happens. Things are totally leveled. These are moved, it says. Those things are leveled. And uh, certain things happen. So chapter 6, chapter 7 is a ceiling of the 144,000, the first part of the chapter. They seem to go throughout, right up to here, they're protected. Right up to when they're staying in Mount Zion, they're standing there. Okay. Then here, uh, chapter 7 also seems to be the praise of those that come out of the Great Tribulation. Okay, now, chapter 8, let's just read that. <clears throat> and uh, we'll start in verse 1, we'll go through it. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. There's two, Blair. And I saw the seven angels who stood before God, and to them were given the seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the king. And the smoke of the incense, <coughs> which came with the prayers of the saints, descended before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mixed with blood. And they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven burning as though it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. 
and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Then the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So I the third part of them was dark, and the day shone not, the third part of them, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpets of the three angels, which are yet to sound. <clears throat> okay, going through this, chapter 8, we have the seventh seal. And there was silence. Now, it could be two things. What I was taught, the first seal was like the three and a half years. This second seal then started at the mid-trib when you have the first kind of battle and the taking over of the Antichrist. And all these others were successive. And we were taught the seventh seal happened just before the second advent. The silence. This is finally it. Christ is coming. Okay, That they had no relation. And after that, the seven trumpets and the seven uh, bowls or vials happened all in, uh, in um, parallel uh, in order like this. Not so much in relation with this, but they just kind of happened and coincided because you see they're similar. And it was an intensification. So they're mainly like this until finally the end and there's a seventh seal in silence. Okay, things are done. Uh, the others that hold to uh, a progressive view, the seventh seal then would happen right here. It's the, the silence. Now, what could that be is Commentaries basically say the silence is because this seventh seal, I mean, just a, a, a seal of silence doesn't seem like to be much of a judgment. But what they say is it's not the silence of the judgment, it's the seven trumpets. So in heaven, remember, they don't see the, they don't see as such these angels God has in there. And you'll see this is the judgment. Uh, some saw that this was it, that after the seventh seal, the earth would be redeemed. But there's silence because almost like not of Oh, or you see something spectacular or, you know, uh, horrifying in a sense, that this seventh seal actually then contained the seven trumpets. Now, if you, now remember, if you don't know the end, like we know all, we've read through the book, but if you're seeing it one event at a time, and finally you know there's seven seals and he's breaking each one, and finally it's the seventh seal, and you think this is it, all of a sudden he breaks it, and then you see that there now there's seven trumpeters, and that each one's a judgment, there's signs because of what is going to happen. The wrath of God. Remember, this is allowed to happen. There's, there's been this earthquake. And it's interesting that um, this earthquake and there's an earthquake later on that's mentioned here. I wonder if these are close. If these are, I, don't, I can't tell if they're close related or what, or if it's near the same. Because there's an earthquake here. We see there's silence. And you see the seven trumpeters and... Um, you see another angel um, grab the censer and, and from the prayers of the saints. And again, the, this is assumed to be like the, not just any prayer, you know, for good weather and stuff like this and safe journeys, but a prayer for the Lord's kingdom to come. That, uh, and it could be not just the church, it could be the Old Testament saints. How long, O Lord? You know, and so it's these prayers and they're cast to earth and a censer and where voices, and this is interesting, I think this occurs three times. Voices, thunderings, lightnings, uh, and the earthquake, I think, is different. That Just that phrase, voices, thunderings, and lightnings. It seems whenever, uh, you'll see them later on, whenever there's a certain type of judgment, there's these voices, thunderings, and lightnings. I'm sure each one has a significance, but I don't really know them right now. But And then an earthquake, it says. It's almost like the center hits the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, the judgment is coming. So there's, with this, is the seven trumpeters and there seems to be a an earthquake so whether this is closely related or not i, I don't know probably not because it doesn't seem like it's going to go back to something this, or this may be happening at the same time but there's an earthquake and then it says they prepared themselves to sound and the first angel sounded 